All right, guys. So uh, you just created your um, your <laughs> IK arm uh, rig, a really simple IK arm rig, and just to show that that still works, so we know where we are. We're gonna source the library and we're gonna run it on the on the arm, one of them at least. And now what we're gonna do is figure out how we can run this on on both of them at the same time instead of write because we don't want to repeat our code twice. I don't want to write this line twice where I just change these names. I want to basically be able to loop it. So we're going to talk a little bit about for looping now. So I want you guys to uh, hit new tab and create a Python tab. And then I want you to import your commands. So my commands as commands. Uh, and the next thing I want you guys to do is write for i in, um, let's say range of three and then say print i. So what we're doing here is that we have a we have a range of three, which means that we have basically think about it as three objects. And I say, go through the first one, print it. What's the first object? Go through the second one, print it. And keep on printing until there's nothing left in range. So let's try and do this. So right now I printed zero, one, two. We know that lists start with zero, so that's okay, right? So we know that there's a range, and this is basically a list, and the first object is zero, the second object is one, two, and that, that's where range is a little bit tricky, but I mean, it makes sense we get three numbers out. That's how you should think about it, right? So right now I want you guys to try and use this a little bit. So we're gonna say like commands.polycube, which is the Maya command for or the Python command and Mel command for creating um, a regular polygon cube. So if you run that and hit enter, you're gonna get a polygon cube. Or at least it looks like it. But if we select the top one here, or if we check our outline here, you can see there's actually three polycubes created. So that's awesome. So our loop is actually creating three polygon cubes for us. So we, now we're just gonna try and like play a little bit around with this before we go back to the arm. So I'm just gonna, we know about set attributes. So let's try and set an attribute here. So every time we create an object, we know that we get something back when I use this code. And what I get back is a transform node and a shape, shape node, right? So in this case, I just want to get my transform node. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to say, only give me the first object, which we know is a transform node. So I'm going to say uh, cube. Uh, let's try and say, I'm not sure. Poly yeah, we can say cube. So if I go in here, now we know that my transform node, basically, you know, the one I'm selecting here. And if I say show shapes, that's where you can see your shape here. But if I right click and remove that again, uh, this is the transform node, right? So we know that there's a transform node and a shape node in anything that exists in the outline, but uh, in in, um, in our viewport, basically. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna delete these three, and I'm gonna say like, let's try and manipulate this a little bit. So let's say like a uh, command start set uh, attribute attribute set adder on the cube. And we want to set it on a cube, so we know that we want to insert that name. We want to translate uh, y. Let's say y. We go upwards and let's insert that cube right here, and then say we translated we translated i. Uh, yeah. So this will make sense in a second, right? Because uh, if I hit go now, it's translating upwards. And if you haven't already figured out why, then it's because I set in the value that was in range and we know that from up here that that's zero one two and if we go out to our outline here you can see the second object got the one and the third object got the two uh, so i hope that makes sense so far so what we want to do now is basically uh, run a loop but from a list so say that we have a list of objects let's say that we have um, sides which is pretty handy handy in this case right so let's say that we have a list of actually I kind of want to do another example before I do this so I say um, let's delete these cubes uh, and then I'm gonna say uh, no actually we do sides so we do sides so we have two sides that's uh, left and right and we put them in a list so so if I say left right so what I can do here is that I cannot only loop over um, a range as I do here. I can loop over like tons of different things in Python. So why don't we try and do that? Try and run that down here and uh, we're gonna delete this. I'm gonna take these ones in. So I highlight them or uh, highlight them here and then I just basically hit shift and tap, which means that I'm backing them off. And if I hit tap without shift, it's moving them out. 
Okay, so let's try and go here. Um, so we have sides, and I want to say four s in sides. So right now I'm just using, as you can see, like I'm just using. You know what? I'm actually gonna keep the other code so you guys can keep on uh, using that as a reference. So that's probably easier. So I'm gonna say four s in sides. And you can see like it doesn't really matter what I call this looping item, you know, like the iterator that's basically running through this list or in this case this list. It doesn't matter. I can call I can call it whatever I want. I can call it uh, I can call it mano anim. I can call it I can I can call it t or s is pretty good because for sides normally a lot of people use i for i in some some sort of thing. But I like to use whatever like if it makes sense. So for s in sides and I'm going to say print s so right now what we should get right we should get that it prints first in the first round it should print l and in the second round it should print r so let's try and go up here and, uh, and get these things and it does so l first and then r or if you guys want to make even sure you can say print and finished round so if I go here, you can see it goes through the first one, then it finishes the round, it goes to the next one, finishes the round. So hopefully that makes sense. We have two objects that are printed one, uh, left and right. And hopefully that makes sense because right now what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy this stuff here and we're going to go into our into our uh, our code in here. Sorry, I don't want to tap that in. But I do want to take this one right because I have two arms and I want to loop them over with my sides. So the way I can do that is that I want to pass some information into these ones, right? I know that I'm going to make arms. So the first thing we're going to do here is we go down here, we say control. Um, and I'll be doing, um, I'll be making the name here. So I say like a limb or let's say root jnt equals to and then we're going to create that name so I'm going to say uh, uh, that's so percentage s and then say arm aja jnt and I'm gonna say I don't need to say these ones but because that's an r already which is great uh, I can see that I also need arm here which is fine so I'm just going to keep that arm there for now. Uh, later on we want to change it so we can run through and do both arms and legs because they're basically the same at least for this at least for this rig. So since we're keeping it really basic but I, I kind of want to expand on that. So right now I'm just creating this name which is the root joint and instead of using this string here I'm going to tell it to use this new string that I created. And also we are saying for s inside so we kind of need to put that side node in here and we do that by saying percentage and s and let's try and run this code and see what happens okay so it says that no object matches uh, l arm aj aj and t okay so we obviously make a we have a problem here so aj aj and t let's try and run that oh and it, uh, it actually ran through and created both of our both of our controllers so we have a problem here and uh, let's try and see what that is okay so you can see here it called actually all of my controllers R which is kind of wrong because one side is obviously left so let's try and go backwards and see what went wrong so already here we know that we forgot to replace this R here the, the, the information that we pass into our into our module and say that that's an R so uh, if we just quickly delete this R and just say S instead because we're ro we're looping over S so we can already use that S inside. So this S is basically representing L, right? And then in the next round it will represent R. So let's try and rerun our code. And bam, everything's perfect. We created both sides at the same time. Uh, and our, and our, our rig is uh, slowly coming together. So right now I kind of you can like play around with this for now. I'm going to go on a little bit now and try and create um uh no you know what? I think the lecture is uh, pretty fine here. I'm going to stick to this. Um so right now we learned how to loop. Uh 
you guys figured out how to set attributes in loops, uh, do it in ranges and do it for uh, a list, which is what we need for now. I promise that when we're going to do this, there wasn't going to be too many uh, <laughs> practical examples, just learning on the job. And that's what I kind of want to stick to. So I should stick to my strategy of that because else it's gonna, just going to turn into any other Python uh, introduction that you can find anywhere on the internet. So let's keep on learning on the job instead of doing too many examples that we don't need. Uh, so yeah, continue to the next lecture, which I think is going to be a little bit about conditioning, um, which is uh, what we call else if statements inside of Python. Uh, but I'll see you in the next lecture, guys.